Hello and welcome to uh, part two of this uh, two-part tutorial on how to make your own NPCs. Last time uh, we made the parachuting Goomba and uh, before I start with this boy uh, I want to quickly address that last time I made a mistake when making the graphics files. I uh, inserted 12 frames but that was actually lacking one frame in each direction. So what I've done is I've gone back, edited the frames here, gone into the INI, and uh, edited the frames here as well. Uh, that's not the frames, that's the frames. And um, what I've done then is uh, just to get that part out of the way, because you don't need to see me do another sprite sheet, I've just uh, inserted the parachute bob -omb INI file and the parachute bob -omb image file, which uh, looks pretty much the exact same as the bob -omb one. Uh, you can see it's in the custom NPC test, but I have not added any AI so far. So he just kind of drops to the ground and does that, whatever that is. <clears throat> so, uh, moving on. The, what I could do is I could just copy this and paste it and call it 752.lua. And uh, the result we would see then is that it suddenly follows the same AI pattern, uh, aside from the fact that it turns into a Galumba at the end which might not be what we want, but it's a one-line change. Um, we can do that very easily. So I'm just going to open this real quick, and it would just mean we would have to change this line and this line over here. That's one way to do it, but that's um, not the way we're going to do it, because the problem with that approach is that these files are so similar why even have two? Because if we want to make any change to one of them, we have to make the exact same change to the other one. And it can get very easy to get desynced, or it just takes a lot of time. So what I like to do, uh, this is something that a lot of NPCs in base game already do, is uh, refer to an AI file. Uh, so <laughs> make a new folder. I like to call it AI because it's like the standard. Uh, because it's the same name that the folder in base game uses. And inside parachuting npc.lua. So, um, the purpose of the AI file is to move as much code as possible out of the uh, npcn.lua file so that uh, the entirety of the AI can basically be handled um, internally and we can just register an npc to a specific AI to automatically make it follow that. So <clears throat> what we want to do essentially is go into my uh, go into the register events and this is all the stuff that the AI takes care of, which means that one is going to move over. We still need an API table, uh, a library table. Oh, I'm sorry. Parachute Goomba is a table, and I'm going to rename it to um, Parachute NPC, because now it's not just a Goomba, and we need to return it. So um, one thing is that right now there is no code really happening to anything. It just still registers to an NPC ID, but we don't have that anymore. So uh, instead of on in an API, we want to make a parachute npc.register, which is our own uh, function, which we're going to call from outside. And we want to register an ID to the um, parachute npc, which just, uh, you know, just takes that. And then it registers the event to the ID directly. Uh, now, we still need to keep track of um, which IDs are parachuting NPCs, so what I like to do for that is make a lookup table. Um, NPC IDs is a table, and uh, when we add something to it, we can remove those two lines, we don't need them. Uh, we say NPC IDs of ID is true. So uh, when we call this later, down here, we can say if npc id is v.id, if not, okay, if it's if uh, we look up in the table whether or not the value is true. For most IDs, it's nil, 
uh, because they're not registered, so there's just no entry there. So that's going to return. But uh, if there is a true in there, it's just going to go further and down here. Um, and that takes care of um, keeping track of the IDs. And right, I'm done. Uh, this event I mistakenly put over here because I just renamed the function, but we still actually need an onInit API. Parachute MPC dot on in it API uh, because this is um, MPC ID agnostic. This should always run. We shouldn't register this multiple times. That would just lead to a ton of bad times where every MPC get checked multiple times for their death. Um, make sure to keep an eye out for that because that's not something we want. Um, now. One thing we don't have checked yet is this uh, video transform, right? So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick all of this out. Oh, I already have. Okay. Um, and just since we have uh, the stuff in the other file now, we can load um, local parachute is require AI parachute npc .lua. Oh, it doesn't need the draw, right? Parachuting NPC. And then we can say parachute.register NPC ID. So what we have now, <clears throat> we have oops, an error. Register is no value. Did I not save? I didn't save. All right. Always save your files. What? NPC manager is no value. Right. Um, I forgot to load NPC manager in the parachuting NPC file. Which is uh, libraries aren't shared, like they are shared, but uh, you cannot access the local variables from in another file. So you want to uh, have them at the top, just as a strict declaration. So uh, the Galumba works exactly like it did before, without uh, having any actual code inside of its file, because what it does now is just tells the parachute library, "Hey, uh, please register me." Uh, I'm a parachute now, uh, keep track of me as a parachute, and uh, now for each parachute in Galoomba it runs this file, uh, this this function, and it also does the kill event, which I can show you right here. Basically the same thing, now with an AI file. Now the cool part about the AI file is just that we can uh, take this, copy this over, and now the... Um, Bomb, the, uh, the bomb will also use the same thing. Um, now, <clears throat> what um, what we still want to do is we want to change which NPC it turns into. Uh, there are two ways to do this. One way is uh, with a NPC config variable, and one is uh, with an, a parameter to parachute npc register. What we're going to do is we're going to do both. Uh, first, I'm going to do the uh, npc config variable. Then I will undo that, and then I will go with the register stuff. Because what I think, uh, because while the um, npc config thing is really nice to know how to use that. Um, it's not as useful in this scenario because why would anyone do that? Why would anyone make a parachuting Galuba turn into a Smooth 3 Bowser? You know, it's it's fun to think about, but uh, I don't see anyone doing it in a very serious case. So uh, down here we can define custom variables. So what we can do is we can define for NPC 751 uh, a variable of spawn NPC is 165, which is a Galuba. And we can then do the same for um, the... Um, no, wait, let's not do that yet. Actually, let's just first do this. So in order to access this variable we just put in, we just need to use npc.config uh, of the ID, which access the uh, NPC config table, which is also what the NPC TXT files refer to, dot spawn NPC. I think that's what we call it. Yep, exactly. Now this we also copy down here, and now we can give it a go. That was really dumb.
But, as you can see right here, there is an error. Uh, this error comes from the bomb, because the bomb doesn't define what it turns into, which is um, a tiny bit of a problem, because we need to define something. Of course, the easy way out is if we uh, check if this exists, then we do that, which uh, doesn't require us to um, to do anything like that, and it also makes it so that <laughs> it just <laughs> keeps doing that. Um, since there is no default case for this. Um, is another reason why I don't think mpc.spawn is the ideal way to handle this. Uh, mpc.spawn, uh, the uh, npc config. So uh, my alternative solution is... Uh, right. Um, so what I uh, suggest is that uh, whenever you have like a default you want to set, um, it's good to have that for uh, mpc config and if you want to of course change it or have the user be able to change it a lot but for like more static stuff like this it's totally fine to just say a uh, spawn id he over here uh, to determine which mpc it should spawn into and uh, because we're so efficient we can instead of using a boolean uh, use the fact that lua is a really quirky language and put the spawn ID in here. A number will always evaluate to true, just like true did. So we already passed this check, and then we can just put that in here, and then we have to pass, and we have to make sure we define um, which one we turn into, because otherwise it won't be registered at the, as a parachute now, since um, it would be set to nil, which doesn't evaluate to true, which means it would still be bonkable, but then crash again. Um, and what we want now is we want to go into the graphics folder to figure out what the uh, NPC is. It was like 408, there it is. So 408 for uh, the parent bomb. And we want to figure out what the effect is. 198. So, this all stays in here. Uh, we, by adjusting all of this, we can have variable size parachutes. Um, so, without any like changing of the code in the back end, just kind of work. And now that that's changed, we have two very friendly NPCs which drop from the heavens, turn into their grounded counterparts, and even when bonked, they turn into the right NPC. So, in summary, the AI file um, just reduces the amount of duplicate code we have and allows like similar NPCs to use like the same backend so that when one of them needs changing all of them are immediately adjusted and you don't have to go all over all of them again. It's also very useful in, uh, in order to like group NPCs together. Um, if I pull up an example from base game real quick, that's not the right folder. The AI folder has uh, something called the water leaper uh, file, which is a little bit more complex than what we have done. But uh, it's basically a handler for all kinds of stuff that comes out of water um, with like some configuration options. Like it can also come out of lava, out of the section, and uh, has have a fixed setting. And I want to show you um, which NPCs this file influences. First, the dolphin. All three of these are affected by the water leaper. Uh, then, this potobo, as well as the upside down one, use the water leaper. And the trotter from Super Mario Bros. 2. 
all of these use the same backend and just have very short AI files to um, just kind of tell them what sizes there are. And as you can see, they all just kind of do their own thing. Their behavior is not exact, but they're, it's similar enough so that it can be grouped together. And that's exactly what we do with AI files. So, um, there's one downside to how we handle this stuff right now, which is something that uh, maybe someone who's interested might want to address if they want to make their own like extensions to this library, which is that um, the sprite sheets are all very complex. One thing that is worth considering is turning the parachute itself into some sort of container that uh, kind of just draws whatever is attached to it by itself so that um, you can attach whatever you want to a parachute, which is something that this library currently cannot do. It's something to think about. It would complicate the code um, and is probably not the best learning exercise, um, but uh, that would be the next step for the parachute uh, library as a whole. Right. <clears throat> I hope you learned something today and uh, got some ideas perhaps for stuff you can do with uh, AI files, NPCs you think you might be able to try out for yourself. And I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of stuff you can come up with and what kind of packs you will be able to develop. For those of you who are interested, there is also a download link to everything I have done here in the description down below on both videos.